It is that time of the year where tutorials become relevant simply because no one plays the goddamn game. But what I can do is post some videos that give you guys contents, you new viewers contents as to how we became a pro player and what was the foundation of this YouTube channel, the start of this YouTube channel and what allowed me to quit my full time job and become a pro FIFA player slash YouTube content creator. This is a full podcast I did with my sponsor, ATP Science. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm out. Sayonara. Au revoir. Adios. Salam. Ciao. Goodbye. I've honestly been using this lately and I have to say it has helped me improve mentality wise as well as you know, focus as well that's the most important thing as we know esports 50 50 50 skill 50 mentality definitely helps <laughs> Um, absolutely insane facility, very professional, um, and these guys are starting to dabble into the gaming space, which is awesome. Podcast is about to start, but honestly, it's, it's insane. ATP, that's where it's at. Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Jeff. Today, we're without Steve, but we do have our new sponsored athlete, Dylan Banks. Dylan, it's Aussie FIFA HD uh, is, your, is your handle. Dylan, I have been a gamer since way back. Um, I love video games. I actually created a video game company. It's not an unusual stretch for ATP Science to actually be working with gamers. You're the embodiment of both gaming, but also fitness and health. Um, you've got an amazing journey. You're a professional esports player now, uh, which obviously some, some hard decisions that you've had to make along the way. Um, you're an intelligent guy, you've gone to university, but you've actually stopped pursuing that career to focus on esports gaming. Mate, tell me where did all of this begin? Oh, it's, a, it's a long story, but, um, you know, only child. So, you know, uh, grew up in a Toowoomba, which is a town around an hour and a half away from Brisbane, which is where, uh, where we're at now. Um, and being an only child, uh, my way of keeping myself occupied, you know, I didn't have any siblings or anything like that, was to, to play games. Um, I think I was honestly, I was only about seven years old. And my auntie's friend um, had an Xbox, an old Xbox, the original Xbox, the first one. Um, and he, he didn't use it. And I think... And my mum paid like 50 bucks for it or something yeah, right. from me and said, you know, we'll just give it to Dylan. He'll, he can play with it. Um, and, and yeah, we, uh, I, well, I, from there, started playing games. It wasn't so much FIFA that I was playing. It was, you know, a racing car game back then. Yeah. Very simple ones, at least, for the first set spots. Um, yeah. But ever since I had been into to gaming, yeah. it wasn't my only passion, of course. I've had many different passions, but gaming was my... Um, number one thing and then uh, I think I was 10 years old and um, my uncle actually he was right into soccer or football wherever you you know whatever, whatever you like to call it yeah in Australia I think we kind of have to call it soccer well, because there's rugby union there's rugby league it. there's uh, there's uh, you know, AFL you say football yeah. over here the people think you're saying rugby league yeah yeah that's right you it know. depends which part of the country and you say football down in Melbourne and they think it's, it's AFL right that's so it. yep. yeah but yep. if you're speaking to an international audience you'll get Roasted. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because soccer is like, I don't know. I mean, it is, though, technically yeah. s soccer. It, I mean, it really is soccer, yeah. right? I mean, it is, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah. I, I would, I'll, I'll just call it soccer. For I, We're well, in Australia. Let's call it soccer. Well, put it this way. You know what? I say football now because I understand. I mean, I grew up playing rugby union my whole life. Yeah. But c converted into, and this is how this whole collaboration start, happened is yep. because my son, I played rugby union in New Zealand, played at a representative level as a junior, um, played rugby all through my um, uh, schooling, yep. um, and never ever, and in New Zealand, 
soccer, as they called it, was for sissies. That's <laughs> yeah. what they used to say. Yeah, yeah. Well, funnily enough, I mean, I played, I don't know, 32 years of, of rugby. I played three years of football. I had a concussion playing rugby for all that time and playing lots of games yeah. where I was, I've separated my right shoulder. I had osteopubis for a season and I also needed surgery on my left knee. Yeah. Uh, all from playing three seasons of football. So no, it is not for sissies. <laughs> but anyway, the... the, the, the um, the whole aspect of you getting into gaming and all the rest of it, and, and mm. we can talk about some of your other passions as well too, is when you're about seven. Yes. It yes. seems to be a sort of a pivotal time. And I can imagine a lot of mums and dads listening to this podcast are going, yes. my son, my daughter. Yes. Is I'm sure this is going to reflect most stories these days, I think, with kids because they all start to get into that gaming they space. They love it. My, yeah. My boy does too. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know. At the age of, you know, five, six, seven, even younger. So h- how old are you now, Dylan? 23. 23. Ah, I was right. Because <laughs> we were saying off air, this is like my son, who's seven, who watches you, yes. and my other son, who's um, uh, 13, uh, who also watches you as well, too, for the tips and tricks. Mind you, we can't, you know, we, I'm not very good at it. My, my son's, you know, probably, he's le- he learns better, right? Because when they're younger, you can sort of adapt faster. There, there's that old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yep. But, um, uh uh, yeah, and that's what I was saying. I thought you were about that sort of age. So in terms then of playing video games, uh, how did your parents feel about that growing up? Um, well, I remember mum always used to have a rule, and it was you can play the game on the weekends. Right. Through the week, yep. you cannot. Yep, we're the same. Yep. Yep. On the weekends, you can. Yeah. But then, having said that, I remember, you know, I used to be very excited to play the game. I used to be very excited to get on the Xbox and play on the weekend. But... After about two or three hours, I used to get sick of it. And then I used to go and, you know, do something else. Like, I used to make... I remember when I was younger, I was into making bow and arrows. Yeah, right. Um, And I used to watch these YouTube videos about, like, you know, oiling the wood and making sure you have the, you know... And I was only about 10, I think. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think I made one that was that good that it shot, like, over 100 metres. Wow. Just out of the backyard, out of this random tree that I was in the backyard. How big was your backyard? It was only about 50 metres. So I okay. tried this thing and it went all the way over the, the fence. And, um, yeah, I was... Uh, uh, mum, Where did it land? Yeah. Well, in the backyard of someone's home. <laughs> and like uh, a poodle's not, like, walking yeah. around, minding yeah. his own business. It was a blunt. Sniffing a flower. Well, that's <laughs> right. Oh, thwack. Lucky there was no cats or anything. Yeah, or my Even gosh. a human walking by. But, um, oh, mum, humans would be fine. It's, 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 it our listeners are more concerned about animals than, you know, humans, <laughs> whatever. No, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, that is pretty fortunate, right? <laughs> yes. But, okay, so you were mucking around as a kid. Yes, I always used to do all the, these kind of things, you know, climbing trees. I still had that childhood, like... Yeah. Where you're outside a lot. Yeah. Because, I, I don't know, I was always into something outside. But so, so, so for parents that are listening to this as well too, again, yep. fast forward now, you're an eSport gamer. Yes. You're an intelligent guy because you went to university as well too, and we'll talk more, more about the degree that you were studying. Did yes. you complete your degree? I did. You did? I just graduated. Uh, um, well, I finished the degree last year, but I just graduated about two months, uh, a month ago because... Political science? Criminology and political science. Okay, yes. cool. So, so and and to do a career as being as I laughed when we first met that you were going to become like 007, you were going to be an <laughs> ASIO spy, you were going to work for Mossad or something like that. <laughs> no. Well, intelligence no. officer. Yes, yeah. I was interested in that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, basically. I mean, you're making your own bow and arrows. You've got your own weapons happening. I mean, like it's not a, it's not a stretch, right? <laughs> I don't know what it was. What was it? I just liked the thought that I knew things that people didn't know for yeah, some right. reason. Okay. I was interested in knowing information that people didn't know. Yeah, right. Um, well, that's interesting because, I mean, realistically, that's an extrapolation of what you do now. You're teaching – you, and, and again, there's so much to unpack. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you're a huge FIFA tragic and fan like myself and you really want to get into it – Even because, esports in general. Because I am as well too, though. But we're going to do a little bonus segment – um, which we're going to attach somewhere as well too, Matt. I'm not sure where. You can let people know. But I want to do like a 10, 15-minute deep yeah. dive question into FIFA with some questions I've got. But we'll do, we won't do. We will do that as part of this because there's yeah. a lot of people that just want the sort of the understanding of an eSports yeah. sort of an athlete. So, uh, sorry, you were saying? Um, yeah, that was basically my interest in trying to get into sort of the intelligence side yep. of thing. Um, but... Reverting back to what I was saying in terms of how I actually got into FIFA, um, that was, you know, I was about 10 years old, I think. My uncle's into soccer, football. Yep. Yep. Um, and 
he had bought the newest FIFA version, which was FIFA 07. Right. Back then. And that was on the at spots still. Yeah. And I remember going around playing this game. I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. I love it. This yeah. is awesome. I, I, I actually really loved playing the game. And I remember even the cover of it was like Ronaldinho on the front yep. of yep. FIFA 07. And I think, honestly, it was one of my favorite. He had the Bas- Barcelona shirts on, right? Yes. Yes. I Absolutely. think I remember seeing the cover. Yep. I've gone through and actually watched all of the iterations since it first came out to now, like where the graphics started to yep. where they are today. Yep. Oh my gosh, the difference is night and day. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I've got some quizzes for you in a minute. I'll pop, I'll pop a bit later <laughs> on and see how, because I mean, as I said, well, the, the, the team are going, we're putting these questions together. They go, Dylan's not going to know that. I'm like, he's a professional. Of course he knows. <laughs> these things um yeah sorry mate keep going yeah. anyway so th- um, that was your your, your first, initial first ex- initial fifa was fifa 07 um funnily enough it wasn't until fifa 15 until i actually played the game again right um i had fifa 07 played at my uncle's place and then after that um you know i might have played it here and there every now and then he would always get the new game yeah. so i would always go over for a game or two as it released how was your how old's your uncle uh, he's like I don't want to say an age that's too... I think he's like 33. Oh, so he's still a young guy. Yeah. Still pretty young. 35, yep. something like that. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I would always go over and play, you know, a game or two. He'd get the new game and I'd go and play a game or two. I never really had it myself. Yeah. Um, and then fast forward to FIFA 15. Yeah. Um, my mate, um, Jed Hocken, who actually is um, a... Uh, he, he does a heap of trick shots. He's quite famous online. He's got like 400,000 followers. Trick shots in f- for football? For, yes, like for football, for, for like, soccer, yes. Okay, wow. Yeah, so he does a heap of trick shots on Instagram and TikTok. Um, we went to school together, and I remember being, it was in high school, uh, in woodwork, um, and we uh, we did a lot of things we probably shouldn't have done, but we uh, we started talking about, you know, FIFA, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I you, 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 you play FIFA. I played a few games throughout, you know, um, my life. And he started talking about Ultimate Team. I'm like, what's this Ultimate Team? Like, it sounds interesting. So I decided to download it on my phone, and you can actually get FIFA Mobile, I think it's called, um, which is the FIFA Ultimate Team version for your mobile that EA Sports has released on the App Store. Right. And I remember playing it and I'm loving the concept like you could get cards any card you wanted uh, and a card is basically the FIFA card so a, a professional footballer if you're a professional footballer in real in the real world you have your own FIFA card F- yeah. EA Sports put it into Ultimate Team and depending on how good you are is how good your stats are on that card Right. and depending on how good the card is will depend on how hard it is to pack it out of a pack yes. that you pay for if you, if you want to, you know, you want to open patch, you pay to open these packs. So it's kind, kind of a little bit like for, for people who aren't familiar with this, the old baseball cards yeah, in the States 100%. that they've got and some are really rare, right? Yeah. Like they're worth millions of dollars Absolutely. because there might only be a handful that they yep. do, right? So it's a collective thing. The difference is in, in FIFA yes. is that you can collect these cards, mm-hmm. put them into a team and then use those players and, play and you can buy them and you sell and trade them. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of got its own little cool That's it. Um, economy. It is a niche and, you know, uh, obviously I think it was a great business sense from EA Sports to do this oh, because, brilliant. you know, um, people would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on these baseball cards yep. that you're talking about uh-huh. and they put it into a game uh-huh. and you know, look at eSports now. Well, it's, it's digital. So oh, yeah. they don't even have to print it. You don't That's have it. to ship it. It's a digital bit download, yep. and yeah, people are yep. buying these. And things, it right? is amazing how much people will spend oh, to get yeah. these cards. Um, and the thing is, um, you look at the new the new trend coming out with the NFTs, with yeah. your um, non fungible tokens. Yep, Facebook Meta. Yeah, yep. um, it's look where you know look where the world's going. It's the- all digital. And the funny thing is, I remember um, uh, Apple CEO um, Mark uh, not Mark Wahlberg. 
Um, um, we're talking about him before. Um, <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. Jo- no, that's Jobs. Facebook. Jobs. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. He said, and I remember watching an interview with him in the 1980s, going, now we have digital natives. He goes, the people that are growing up in the 80s effectively have never known a world without computers. And that was back then. So, you know, Dylan, you were born in 98. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and again, it's funny. I remember when the Xbox came. I remember when PlayStation came out, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you wouldn't remember these things. Um, and and that you, the immersion level, I guess, of children now on iPad, iPhones, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, whatever it is, is so ingrained into our culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some parents, it's a babysitter. Yep. For some uh, children, it's a reward. Yep. And everything in between, right? Yep. And I'm not saying that it's good or bad. I am so passionate some about video. Some reflect on that as being negative. Oh, for sure. And look, like yeah. anything, right? Yeah, you can say that of anything. You can say that of of food. You can say that of uh, gym. You can say that. I mean, when anything becomes obsessive and you take it too far, diet. I mean, anorexia versus yeah. you know. All, I mean, whatever things can be. Nothing in itself is bad per se. Like yeah. in this, it's just how it's used and the level of I guess responsibility, oversight. Um, you know, so it doesn't sound like if your parents, if your mum, I should say, was putting. Um, governors on you in terms of okay only allowed to play on the weekend that it doesn't sound like you were crazy overboard in terms of playing too much right no 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 i wasn't and um i still am not now i'm a a pro player uh technically and um you know i'm not i'm i'm playing maybe two three hours a day okay do you do you play any other games no none so you just exclusively FIFA. Yeah, and, yep. and is that for a time reason? Is that because you don't want to pollute your thinking with other um, movements? Is that what is that? Um, obviously, uh, with with what I'm doing now, um, you know, trying to compete, um, you know, also running my own coaching business yep. and um, YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, everything. Right, yep. it's, yep. it's it takes its toll. So I, I don't have the time to play other games. Yeah. Having said that. If I get another game, I play it for an hour and get sick of it. Yeah, uh, and I've and I've always been like that, mm. except for FIFA. Yeah, right. And that's what really has got me wondering why am I so attached to this game? Because, as I said, I played it. I started on the mobile, played this Ultimate Team um, with these, you know, uh, these you know these cards that you can pack and you can build a squad and play other people. Mm. Then I decided to, you know, what? Let's get it on the on the PlayStation because at the time I think I had a PS3. Yeah. Um, and FIFA 15 was out. Um, I discovered that this Ultimate Team was on the console, so I'm like, hell yeah, let me get this thing and, and try it out. And I was hooked. Yeah, right. Absolutely hooked. Um, one thing led to another. You know, FIFA 15, I played that game. I was very bad at the game. I remember, you know, being, I remember like definitely getting angry. Like, I, I couldn't stop myself. Like, if you lost, you get angry and you, oh, Years have gone on. Obviously, I've I can control myself now, and uh, it's good. And you need to, especially at a high level uh, in esports, you need to have a good mentality because that's one of the most important things. And I've always said that. Um, yeah, over skill I, level. Okay, my son and I we play together because we've got Xboxes set up on a lounge upstairs, a little lounge upstairs, and we've got two sets of TV side by side, mm. and we play Xbox together. And uh, um, uh, he actually likes career mode. He he plays career mode, so yep. I'm sort of playing my game while we're doing it. Yeah. Uh, and even so, this was I said the other day for people that can't see, I'm holding it. I've, got, I've actually got a callus on my thumb, right? <laughs> from play, I can't believe Dil, Dylan doesn't, right? No. So, obviously, I'd smash you in a game if I played <laughs> yeah. you, but um, <laughs> but um, Probably. yeah, yeah, uh, we're actually going to have a challenge to the death, okay? We're going to play, uh, but yep. you're only allowed to have bronze cards, okay. um, yeah, you'd, actually, good. you'd still beat me, um, but I think what's really funny is that, um, my son, it's, it's actually a really op- good opportunity now. He's not allowed to play unless his room's tidied, he's allowed sit hours to be able to play the game, mm-hmm. um. He loses it sometimes. I mean, I watch these kids on 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 TV. Sometimes there's that German guy that smashes the monitor playing World of Warcraft, which actually I was a GM in World of Warcraft back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I was actually playing up until last year. I was, I was playing World of Warcraft because I absolutely freaking love it. Right, mm. like as I said, I'm a real tragic. Hey, but so is Captain Picard, who's um who's uh oh, married to Ashton Kutcher. What's her name? Um, there's a lot of famous actors and other people that actually play. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, video games, and I guess because that's well, Snoop Dogg right. just got released, uh, just got signed by Face, really, e- esport team. Yeah. Wow, 
Is he good? Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Is he good? Um, I don't know. He's more of a content creator slash right. gamer for them. Right. But I think he is actually good. I, I saw a clip of him on COD and he was definitely doing better than what I could. Wow. Um, so, I mean, it, it comes down to what you're passionate about, right? So, so my son would sit there. Now, he's actually, as we speak down the coast, he's playing in the Queensland State Championships. Yep. Uh, you know, he's, 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 a, he's a good good athlete. But man, I tell you what, the resilience, he's just sitting there. I'm just saying, mate, seriously, you need to pause and walk away, right? Because yeah. it's like, blah, and he's playing against the AI. Like yeah. he's not even playing against another yeah. player. And it's funny because I watch some of these guys as well too. But there are character developing opportunities there if, Absolutely. if, if governed the right way. I mm-hmm. mean, left unchecked, you've got, um, you know, kids smashing monitors and breaking joysticks and that's bad i mean if your kid's doing that or if you're doing that you really need to evaluate and going what is my internal yeah you know life looking like yeah. but there is opportunities to be able to calm yourself down yeah now i take that in, in real sport i mean playing football as well too and doing yeah. these things and also now you as a professional gamer now you've traveled overseas uh have not, you tra- no uh, not overseas i've played in the national national leagues here in yep. australia so you've played yep. at a high level you've played in tournaments uh you know for, for, for notoriety obviously it's now your game being able to control your emotions whether it be on the real football pitch or mm. whether it be on the virtual football pitch is the same thing right yes it's he who keeps their cool wins absolutely yeah i think it's or uh, plays at least their best game yeah yeah 100 percent. and i think it's um it goes in any sport like you were saying not just esports yeah. soccer football whatever it is mentality is key um and that's something i've really had to work on and i would say only for the last two to three years i would say from fifa 19 my mentality has has been something that I've been really starting to get a hold of mm. and, and not sort of get so angry at the game. Yeah. Because um, as, I, as I was saying, went from FIFA 15 then to FIFA 16, starting to get a little bit better, but I wasn't there. You yeah. Know, I wasn't at the high level. Yeah. And then FIFA 17 came by. And at this stage, I was, you know, above average, but I wasn't pro, let's say. Yeah. But at the time, EA Sports was wanting to dabble into esports because there was no actual esport with the game. Yeah. They had, I think, the FIFA E World Cup, which incorporated kickoff for many years, but there was no esport involved with Ultimate Team. Right. And that's when it really kicked off because of how popular Ultimate Team was. People got hooked to the game. They then started making it competitive. And then all of a sudden, everyone gets hooked on this esport thing with EA Sports and Ultimate Team, and it starts to become quite quite large quite big right and that was in fifa 17 yeah and i remember watching the you know the, the ea sports um you know live broadcasts on tv and, and twitch and just think you know what i want to i want to do there. that i want to do that so for people who don't know fifa ultimate team is where you can actually use players from all over the world playing yep. in different leagues yes. different countries you have to make them fit so there yes. must be commonality in terms of with chemistry so if they've got bad chemistry it actually negatively affects their stats yes. and i'm not going to bore people who aren't interested in fifa and are listening to this because they yep. want to understand gaming and potentially how you become a professional gamer yep. and what that means for their kids and what yep. that means for them um because it's fascinating just just story but but it's 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 a really cool management and addictive side of the game there are websites i mean there's even a guy called the foot accountant that goes through and talks about trading buying your cards and trading them he actually treats it like a stock market i've never seen him play a game but he's buying and selling and trading cards right which is kind of like stamp collecting and but it's for virtual dollars right i don't know i think it gets like you know thirty thousand forty thousand views for podcasts as well too right it's it is such a huge economy and youtube obviously that many eyeballs means that people are going to be watching and and i guess it's one i want to transition to now as well too is that so you're, you're at university. Mum's very proud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're, 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 you've completed it. You're looking at a, a career and you go, hey, mum, <laughs> how did that conversation go? Uh, she was sceptical, to say the least. Sure. Um, I would say, and she's always supported me through what I've done. Um, but I think that generation is, you know, they're interested, but they're also sceptical of what it can actually do for me in the long run. Um, sure. Also, you know, is there a long-term um, plan, you know, things like that. Um, I would say uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. I don't care what anyone thinks. Yeah. There's a lot of credits 
um, that think, you know, you're stupid for doing this because, you know, and, and, and that's normal. Like people like comfort. People like to um, have, you know, a future ahead of them that they know will obviously be guaranteed. Um, <laughs> but... Have you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? <sighs> no. You're pretty much well quoting exactly what he says in his book. Yeah. And, and without risk, there is really no reward. I mean, and exactly. what is safe? What, what, I mean, you can be fired. You, you could be working for a company and what That's have it. you. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because we're having the same conversation with a friend of ours um, whose son is going through. By the way, roughly how old is your mum, if you don't mind me asking? She is 42. She's younger than me. Yes, she's so, younger when she was 19. Oh, my younger. gosh. So you could be my son. Here you go. We always make the joke that we'll end up in the same old home. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute, man. <laughs> That's cool. Um, uh, but lo- the thing is, right, is that you're, you're, even your mum's younger than me, right? And I get it. But I think this is one of the things as well, too. The world pays for artistry. So in other words, expertism. If, if you're an expert in something, mm-hmm. then you can make a living from it. And if you're passionate about it, that's what, because those are the things that carry you through. If, 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 if it was easy, everyone would do it. Nothing in life that is worthwhile is ever easy. You've got to put effort. You've got to put study. An entrepreneur in French means risk taker, which yep. means that you have to risk something to, yep. to achieve it. Now, that could be reputation. That could be money. That Absolutely. could be time. Yep. That could be relationships. Mm-hmm. And, and this is, if you say up there, high level agreement, deep level alignment. This is sort of, a, this is funny. This is our business coaches that we're talking to. Alignment in terms of what you're doing alignment with external factors but most importantly is alignment with yourself in other words i want to do this now you never fail you only learn Mm -hmm. so when people go oh you're going to fail it's like no no i just learned that that didn't work or i learned that that isn't what i want to do Mm -hmm. but what's the worst thing in doing is working a a job that you're not enjoying that you're not passionate about where you've got an itch now if you're happy in your work great yeah you're blessed yeah. because you're probably only a small but if you've got an entrepreneurial desire to do something and it's in there yeah. then go for it 100%. because you're going to learn a crap ton yeah. you know it's not like you can't go back to well you've finished uni uh, it's not like you can't utilize that skill set later on if this doesn't work out to go you know what I gave that a try I'm going to go do this mm-hmm. um, I, I just I hate the linear thinking I hate the you, you know you have to do this is the way that life has to be done mm-hmm. you know so anyway Absolutely. And, um, you know, after finishing uni, um, I did have a job offer up in Townsville because yeah. I studied in Townsville. Yeah. Um, studied in Townsville for about four and a half years, and that was obviously, it's a three-year degree, but I had to do it over four and a half because I had to support myself yeah. and work full-time. Mm-hmm. Um, Where'd you work? Sorry? Well, which, which company? Well, it's, it's funny because the first year or so, I was very tight on yeah. money because I was on $200 a week. Wow. Yep. So massive share house? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And, um, you know, rent was a 120 yep. and then $80 to support myself for the Holy rest. Holy cow. So it was tough. I, lived um, on t- I did something similar. I lived on two-minute noodles. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, this is when I had no idea about fitness or health, by yeah, the way. Absolutely. Anyway, yeah. And I think they're one of the worst foods you can have. Oh, totally. Yeah, Terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, I got a job managing the cricket, and that was what the $200 a day was. Um, so Managing the cricket? Cricket. The local cricket. Yes. Oh, so yeah, how much did you get paid? $200. For, for, for a day's work? For two or three days' work. Wow. That's pretty good for a young guy. Not bad, yeah. Yeah. I had to umpire and, uh, okay. through the day yep. um, and basically just manage it, um, manage all the other umpires and stuff. Yep. Um, no, no support from the government, uh, no Centrelink or anything like that yep. um, because um, I was still classed as dependent even though I was 16 hours away from home. Wow. Um, which was, I don't know. Crazy. Anyway, yeah. no comment. But um, then... I ended up getting a job with uh, Barbecues to Law. Okay. Um, and they were awesome, the, the, the people that owned that. They were always supportive of me. The best thing about it was every Saturday we did a big smoke up. Because you would, you know, you put <laughs> sausages <laughs> and ribs and, and brisket into this smoker oh, and it would go through the car park. Yeah. And then everyone would fly. I bet. And what, a, what a good marketing technique. That absolutely. Is. And, and Dylan used to load up, didn't you? I used to load up yep. chicken wings, yep. pork belly, yep. brisket, yep. all of the American style smoked oh. meats. Um, good bulking season there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good bulking for there. Because so. obviously you're into your gym and we'll get to that in a minute yes, as well too, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. So. But um, I worked there for two to three years. Yeah. 
okay, um, which was good. Money was not a problem then because I was yeah, it was good pay with Barbecue's Galore. They looked after me. Um, I even remember when COVID hit, they said, "Look, you'd be tight. Come over for dinner every night. That's wow. fine." They were they were awesome. Jeez, Raj and Andrew, if you're listening, yeah, we're about to lay base, which in which, Townsville, in Townsville. Yes, um, they're they're lovely people. Yeah, uh, they support. Go, if you need a barbecue and you live in Townsville, go get one from them. Yes, yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, my degree, criminology and politics. Yep. Um, always had been interested in, uh, you know, criminal criminals and, and how they, you know, why they com- commit crime. Um, are they born? Are they, um, you know, influenced to commit crime? Nature, nature. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And then also the political side as well, because I was interested in the, you know, the intelligence well, side of criminals. stuff. Um, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love, you, I love you, Bert. If you're listening, by the yeah. way, yeah. <laughs> he's our local member. <laughs> um, Actually, and Darren Pell, yeah, his son, yeah, is Lachlan Pell, mm-hmm. who's one of the biggest gamers on YouTube. Really, he lives in Japan. Wow. I looked up his net worth the other day. Don't quote me. Yep. Tw- Twenty million a year he makes. Holy. Yeah. Wow. So his son, his his father, is the counselor for this area. <laughs> yeah. Right, that's Darren Pell. He's a good guy. He actually trained at the same gym as me back in the day. Yep. So yeah, anyway, just anyway. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, uh, I was into all of that sort of thing. And then I was working at Barbecue's Law, but a job opportunity came up, and that was uh, with parole, right? Probation and parole. Yeah. I was in my final year of uni, uh, and ad come up through through my emails. Um, that there was an offer going for a job that for anyone who was still in uni and had their last year, you could apply as sort of an intern, but I was still getting paid the same as someone working there. And I applied. I think there was something as like 30 to 40 to 50 applicants and I got it. And I was a bit shocked because I didn't expect myself to get it with that many people. Um, that was an eye opener. That was a big eye opener. I, I worked there for nine months. Um, the people you're dealing with are not the people you want to deal with. Mm. <laughs> mm. They are the the you know the bottom feeders of society. They mm. are not people you want to be dealing yep. with. Um, and you know there was I can't I can't really t- I mean I can talk about stories but. A lot went on and it just, what I liked about the job was that because it was so intense and because there was so much going on and because of the stuff, people you're dealing with, the day went so quick that you didn't didn't even look at the time. I hated those jobs where, and and I, and I, not only, you know, before I even moved to Townsville, I was working at kebab shops, Chinese restaurants since I was 14. Mm -hmm. So I've worked since I was a young guy. Um, I hate those jobs when you look at the time constantly thinking, when am I going to get out of here? You know? I think I've said this before on the podcast, but I'll, I'll, I, reckon I've, I reckon I've had one of the worst jobs for that ever in my entire life. <laughs> Matt, have I mentioned this before? So, so when I was first married, uh, between jobs, like yeah. everything was turning to crap. Yeah. So I had to go and get, get some money. So Tony and I basically had our own company. That's my wife. Um, we went over to, to the UK, we invested everything, foot and mouth hit, destroyed all of our savings, basically came back nearly bankrupt, right? Yep. Had to start again. And, I, and, and Tony's mum got me a job at a, a factory that blew bottles for Coca-Cola. So I, yep. I was in a production line. You had to have air, pl- air plugs in. So you couldn't talk to the person next to you. You couldn't listen to music because there was a safety hazard. A- and the job was, and look, for people who can do it, some people love it, right? Mm. But my brain doesn't yep. like I need to do something with this otherwise I'll go nuts yep. anyway so the bo- the bottles would come along there'd be in a, a line of, of five or six bottles you'd pick them together they'd slightly stick you'd pick them up and you'd turn around and you'd put them on a pallet and then you'd go for the next one and yep. there'd be someone on the other end right they would take five <laughs> or six and you'd, and you'd load up a pallet and you'd yep. put a thing on and then someone would ta- and take it away now they eight out three eight hour shifts right now I, I, there was a there was a clock over where the TV is here yeah. over to my left hand side and I wouldn't look at it right so the second day, and the first day was, okay, you know, it's a bit tough. You know, it was pretty good money. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, like, you know, for what you're doing, like, you know, back then. But, and I wouldn't look at the clock anyways. So I said, like, okay, right, I reckon must be coming up to my first break because I worked the afternoon shift. I think it was two till, two till 10 or something like that. Yep. 
coming up to my first break at, at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it was. Um, and I've gone, okay, you've got to, got to be close. No, I'm not going to look. I'll give it another five minutes. And I looked up and about 15 minutes had gone past. And I went, I, I can't do this. I'm going to go absolutely nuts. And, and I guess this comes back to what you're sort of saying. Is this the kind of thing where you looked at it and you went, is this my life? Yeah. Is that what gave you the courage to decide to turn pro? It is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you thought um, you'd give it a crack. So ha- were you making any money from FIFA at that time? I mean, what success had you had? Were you doing the eSports League? Were you doing any of that? So whilst I was still at Barbecue's Law, um, this is kind of where my pro um, career at, under FIFA just kicked off. Uh, at the time, it was FIFA 19. And it stems off, as I was saying, I was getting better from FIFA 17. I wanted to get to that eSport level by then, um, by, you know, the next year, which is FIFA 18. Yeah. That was when the first E-League season came out. Right. Now, the E-League is basically the eSport league of the A-League, which the A-League is the football league here, the soccer league here. Yeah. So it's equivalent to the NRL. Yeah. Uh, the A-League. Yeah. They called it the E-League, obviously, for eSports. And every A-League club whether that be Brisbane Raw, Melbourne City, Melbourne Victory, the Newcastle Jets, whoever it was, had to pick two representatives as their eSport players right. to then compete in the National League. So, is it, is it, so you're playing t- two on two or is it a one no. and a reserve? so there was one for Edspots and one for PS4 oh, at the okay, time. Oh, okay, gotcha, yep, yep. Yeah, and what would happen, uh, you know, basically with that competition – there would be an aggregate score. So the export player would play the other Xbox player that of the club they were versing. The PS4 player would play the PS4 player. And then the, the scores would combine. Combine, okay? And that, that uh, 2018 it was, FIFA 18. I wanted to, to make it, man. And like, as I said, I made my mind up in FIFA 17. I'm like, I really want to make this. You know, esports is something I want to pursue. Yeah. It's insane to... You know, think that you can play this professionally and it can be live streamed on TV with commentators and all yeah. this. I'm like, God damn, I want to make this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't make it in FIFA 18. Right. And I was a bit gutted, yeah. but it gave me an opportunity to really work on getting better and really pursuing this. Yeah. So in FIFA, from, from between FIFA 18 and FIFA 19 was when I really cracked on and started practicing a lot. Yeah. Started watching a lot of tutorials on, on YouTube. Yeah which is funnily enough what I do yep, now, yep. Um, teaching people how to play and getting better at the game. FIFA 19 came around and Brisbane Raw were looking at selecting their next representatives. I didn't think they went too well in FIFA 18. They went, they got like eighth. Right. Which wasn't and you have to use the players in the club, right, when you play? No. You so don't. you can use the ultimate team, but yeah. you, can, you have to use two Brisbane Raw players. Right. So, uh, you know, if you're a Melbourne City representative, yeah. you can use whatever players you want in the ultimate team, which yep. can be Ronaldo, Messi, right. whatever okay. it is. Yep, yep. But you have to have at least two. And you wear their jumper, obviously. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's a branding exercise, effectively. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. you wear their jersey. So, so which of the Brisbane players do you use, by the way? I used, I think I used a Jack Hingett. Where does he play? What position? Right back. Right. And Brown, maybe? I can't remember. Okay. Uh, it might have been... Um, uh, I, can't, I can't remember. I, I see the uh, Sturridge is playing for Perth. Food. He Probably is. Him, right? One of my most favourite players ever. Is that right? Yeah, I actually really want to go and see him play. Wow. Um, so he's, a, he's a great player. Didn't he play for England at one stage? He played for Liverpool. Yeah. And I'm a Liverpool supporter. Right, right. So okay. I, yeah, so I, is my son. I really like Sturridge. Yeah. Um, would love to see him play. He gets injured a lot, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only trouble. But, uh, yeah, that year, um, FIFA 19 came around. Uh, Brisbane Raw were looking for the Nets player. And at the time, for that month in Foot Champions, which was the ranking system back then. So Foot Champions is something where you play 40 games in a weekend league, which is a, you know, a, a, a tournament that runs every weekend from, at the time, it was Saturday and Sunday, you had to play 40 games. And each game takes you about 20 minutes, right? 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. So it is a lot of, like, a lot, a lot of playing. Yeah. Uh, I think it was from Friday night to Sunday night. Yeah. They've changed the format now. They right? have changed it now. Thank it's only God, 20 right? games, thank yeah. God, because yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was no life. an absolute nightmare. Yeah. No, life, no life on the weekend. Yeah. Because it's not like you can go back to back to back to back to back to back, right? You need to refresh. You need to, That's especially it. if you had a bad loss, you need to calm That's down it. a little bit. That's yeah. it. Oh, yep. my gosh. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That month, though, the rankings were... Um, up for foot ch- for the foot champions tournaments for that month that they were selecting with Brisbane Raw and I was second yep. in Australia. Yeah. Uh, 
at the time, um, I had been signed by an eSport team, which was linked to them. And basically from there, I was able to, with my rankings, plus being associated with that team, yep. to join Brisbane Raw. The Brisbane Raw signed me. That was my first season under, uh, under the, uh, in the E-League. And, and so could anybody try out for Brisbane if they lived in the States or lived in New South Wales or did they have to be a Queenslander or what was the deal? At the time, they were more... Brisbane do like to keep it local. Yep. So they usually try and go within Queensland. At the time, I was in Townsville, which is 16 hours away. So they were still willing to do pick anyone in Queensland as long as they were in Queensland. Right. Right, because Townsville's obviously north of Brisbane. Yeah. And that was my first tournament. Bit sceptical going into it. You know, there are a lot what, of... What year was this? 2019? 2019. Yep. Yep. Um, so that was the second season of the A-League. Yeah. Uh, it was on Fox Sports. Yeah. Uh, it was Do you know on, what the viewership was like on that? It was, I think, 100,000. Wow. So a lot. A lot. Um, That's great. I think, actually, they got more viewership than the A-League Grand Final. Holy cow. Yes. So that just shows you, hey, like the size and... Of eSports. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Um, and that was my first tournament going in. Wasn't much spotlight on myself, obviously, and I wouldn't expect there to be. I was new. It was more on the players who'd been in there previously and had won. Yeah. Going in, I just thought, you know what? Just play your game. Don't care if you win or lose. And that mentality is what you need. Yeah. You can't be going in going, I'm going to win or I'm going to lose. Yeah. You can't go in thinking either of those things. You need to go in clear-headed. Yeah. Did so. Won my first match. And it was actually an exhibition match for the first round because EA Sports had mucked up that year and they hadn't allowed us the ultimate team accounts yet. They hadn't unlocked them for some reason. Right. So we had to use kickoff and all the players were complaining about saying, this is ridiculous, it's not ultimate team, I don't like this, I'm not going to play for points if it's not properly done. I didn't care that much, to be honest. I was just happy to be in the E-League. Excuses or results, right? Like yeah. you just get on with it. Yeah, that's it. But the first round didn't count. I still won the first round, exhibition match. I think it was Jesse, which was Central Coast Mariners that year. Yep. Going into the second round, game on. First round, that was for points. I was coming up against Jazz, who at the time was, I think, number one in Australia. He had played overseas in Europe. Wow. Had drawn with the world number one. Wow. Top, top player. Was uh, he Australian? He is. Wow. Yes, and he was representing... Uh, Western Sydney Wanderers at the time. Yep. And I beat him 6 1. Wow. You yep. smashed him. Yep. What, what happened? How did you beat him? Yep. Um, just on your game, was he off? Um, was it just a perfect storm? Did you Were you just that good? Uh, I was just on my game. Right. Um, I had gone in saying, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'm here to play my game, stick to my, you know, game style. And for those of you who don't know, and I'm not going to bore you with FIFA stuff, as you were saying, this is probably we'll, a few we'll people. Do the, we'll do the boring yeah. FIFA stuff in a, in a little 20 minute sort of yeah. Easter egg or yeah, yeah. side thing or whatever we yeah. want to call it. Because yeah. right? as I said, I've got some questions for you because yeah. I love it. And there's pro probably a lot of people who are listening to this have either come over from that FIFA one to learn more about you. But yeah, yeah for those that are not FIFA tragics or interested in video game, yeah, 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 we will we'll, we'll do that on another one. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. Throughout that tournament, I think I'd lost twice and I'd won the rest of my games. Yeah. So I did quite well. Ended up taking Brisbane Raw to second. Wow. Well done. Over that whole tournament. And we fell just below Melbourne victory. Right. Right. So yeah. that was my first year, first tournament. All of a sudden, you know, people are realising, well, Ozzy can play. He's pretty good. Right? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Then 2020. Well, by, by the way, was there any prize money in that? Not that year. No. No. Um, there was entry into the EA Sports Global Series. So if you had to okay. come first, you got a ticket into oh. the global tournament, yep. which is in Europe, yep. which is for big money. Right. A million dollar prize. How, how did the guy that won go over on that tournament? Not do you know? very good, I don't know. Yeah. No. Did he have to use the Melbourne team? No, 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 oh, no, no. no. This is then. just in yep. EA. This, okay. the, 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 a -League, the A League is connected to EA Sports, but it's not necessarily their style of Because it kind of wouldn't be fair if you had to use you know, a couple of players. I mean, it, it. nothing against the, the Australian guys. I mean, yeah, but, but they're know. not as good in the game, that's for sure. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 2020 came along, FIFA 20. I was determined again to make it for Brisbane Raw. Um, again, they were happy to sign me. Did quite well for the for the second year, for the first year. Yep. Going in, um, 
I remember the first day there was two. Now the first season I played in, it was over nine rounds over nine weeks, so it was a lot of flying to Sydney. The second year, Do you had to fly down to Sydney. Yes, <laughs> every round on wow. Thursdays. Jeez. Yep. And it would be, you know, you'd have makeup done, you'd have, you know, it's all yep. on TV. Oh, well, we, we had that done here, Dylan, before we came in, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hair, hair and makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I put it on, I put it on lippy, and even if no one's here. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I don't mind it. Um, second year, it was over two rounds, and they decided to, I think it was obviously to make it cheaper for them to run. Two rounds, you played half of the group on the first day, and then a month later, you played the second, second day, which is the other half of the group. I remember the first day turning up, and I need my glasses to play, otherwise it's blurry. Yeah. And the lights from yeah, the production, yeah, yeah. they blind me. Wow. Like, unreal. Do you, have the, do you have the blue glasses? No. It's funny because Steve and I, we're going to do another podcast with you on the science of gaming, like, yeah. you know, reaction times, dopamine levels, yeah. serotonin, sleep patterns, yeah. you know, uh, biorhythms, bio, uh, bio all this sort of stuff. We're going to get right into the science of it on another podcast down, down the track. But one of the questions I was asking is, do those blue blocking glasses, you know, that blue light, do they work? I mean, obviously yeah. you don't use them all. That was then. Do you use them now? No. No. I don't use them Okay. Now. Um, I use my own prescribed Right, glasses. Right. Um, yeah. Because you can get prescribed with the blue light filter, right? I think so. I think so. Anyway, yeah. well, you know what? When we do the podcast, we'll work out if it's yeah, worthwhile. We will. Who knows? I might yeah, give Steve, you an extra 2%. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, Steve might know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Steve, yeah. Steve, Steve will know. Yeah. He's really bummed he couldn't be in this podcast. He was kind of like champion at the bit wanting to come in. But I said, no, no, we're going to save the science for for another podcast. Yeah, right? yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Um, I forgot my glasses that first day. Oh, my Lord. How did you? How bad is your vision? Like what? What strength are your glasses? Because these are a one point five. I've just gone to like a two point five. Like, like that's the the baby step. Like, well, is it the the bottom one? Uh, or is it the next my one? My vision's quite good. It's just when I'm looking at screens. Yeah. In an hour. Yeah. My eyes will start. You know, you did those eye boogers. Yep. They will start just tearing up and yep. pus was like like mucus was coming out oh of my it Lord. and like my eyes were dreadful. Right. I remember waking up the next day and my eyes were not opening. Holy That's cow. how bad it was. Wow. Um, Just the eye strain. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. First game did really well. I came up against this guy called Honey Badger, who again that. was a yeah a, a global player. He played overseas in Europe. He was wow. one of the best in Australia. Um, one of the best in the world. Wow. Beat him one nil. Wow. For my first game. Um, and at the time, I was quite fresh. My eyes were good. I didn't need you no. Know, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Then the second game came along. And I played Footwiz Marco, who was... I've heard you mention him before in your podcast. He won the E-League in 2019. Right, yeah. This was my second game. Going into it, again, I felt good, but I wasn't going to be too cocky. I yep. wanted to play with a clear mind. Yep. It didn't matter if I won or lost. Yep. Went 1-0 up, but then collapsed, went 3-0, 3-1 down. And by then, my eyes were starting to go really bad. I couldn't see the screen. They were blurry. The production lights were stopping me from seeing the screen. And at the end of the day, I think I finished with two wins, a draw, and two losses. It's not bad. So it wasn't bad. No. It was a good first day, and yeah. it put us into fifth place. Okay. So I was at fifth place, moving into day two. Could you get your glasses? Remember my glasses. So did you leave them in the hotel? I left them at home. Oh, but you're in Sydney. Yes. So, you, so what did you? How did you get your glasses for the second day? Uh, the second day was a month later. Oh, okay. Yes, well, yes. I'm thinking, bloody hell, how did yeah. you fly back to Brisbane and get them and fly back? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, no. Okay. Um, the second day was a month later, and went in glasses, ready, to, you know, fire blazing, ready to go. Went undefeated that day. Wow. And took Brisbane to again second place. Second behind. Behind Sydney FC, okay, which it was, was bloody Melbourne Marco again. and full okay. Jamie. Right, right. I was a bit gutted because I'm like, you know what? Second last year, second again, second again this year. If only I had have done better. Well, as I like to say to my children, second is the first loser. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, but, and just as a side note, do you get on with these guys? Like, is there a good camaraderie, or yeah. is it a? Yeah, I'm going to smash your. Fa you could probably beat them up though. You're a lot bigger than. Them. <laughs> No, yeah, I don't that's what he said, that. Marco. He said he's going to smash it. <laughs> no. Next time he said no. <laughs> no but, but no, you get on well. Like yeah, there's a absolutely. And honestly, yeah. I think the best thing about the E-League and actually, you know, 
being a pro player is not playing the game at a live events, actually meeting the, the fellas again. Yeah. Because it's you put names right. to faces. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you've got um, a shared interest. And I mean, it. like, you know, yeah. it's, it's a real privilege, I'd imagine, to be able to play video game at that level, being represented and actually talking with other people on a like mind. Absolutely. As I said, I mean, I could carry your bags for you because I just want to come. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <you could>. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Give everyone some, some, some yeah, product. Some, yep. Yeah. Some, uh, some UPIA. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think in terms of... Um, uh, uh, what what happened from there? I mean, obviously, that's two defeats that yep. could get on your mindset a little bit. Or were you all right? Frustrated? What was if? Fine. Was it a what if? Because, I mean, again, if you had to put your glasses in the first game, you, you could have gone through yep. and won. What it did do is put me in a good position going into the grand final, which was in Melbourne. So we're at second place for the group stage. Yep. But then... After the group stage, you go off individually, so you don't rely on your partner's score. Yeah. You rely on yourself right. going into the finals. And wherever you placed personally on the leaderboard, so you had your team score, but then also you had your individual uh, results as well. Yeah. That would, and they would calculate it. Um, and again, I was second in the league. Mm -hmm. So I brought helped Brisbane Ryan Naylor was my partner at the time as well he and I took Brisbane to second place as a group and then also my individual record was I think second in the E-League in your PlayStation he was Xbox yes D could you beat him um, did you ever play him I did play him this year Ad identical oh. teams or different teams no different teams oh, so you bet you're playing him now on foot yeah right yeah and you beat him yeah <laughs> He's What's his name? Ryan Naylor. He's Ryan. that guy that was in that episode where he beat me 4-0 and then the following yes. two weeks, I beat him 4-1. Nice. Yep. So good. he's a very good player. He actually re recently got picked up by Melbourne City. Right. So he's representing Melbourne City. Um, basically, the individual scores were second, so it would have placed me in a good position in the seeding because it, it basically, I think if you're in the bottom seven, you, it's, it, and it's an elimination bracket, so you play off against players. But if you're in the top, like, five or something, you, you make it to the next round automatically in the yep. quarterfinals or something like that. Yep. It would have placed me in a good position. Then COVID hit, and um, COVID basically, yeah, it, it called everything off. There was no grand final for the Elite two, the Season two, uh, 3. But, um, I, I, I just... I'd, why? Because, mm. I mean, you would think it's it's an online... Mm. It, surely if anybody could make that work is because they, they couldn't set up the cameras to watch. I mean, That's right. is, that, is that what it was? Uh, not really. I think there was like a... It wasn't... They they sort of tried to do that, but it wasn't a full-on grand final. Like, it, the, the results didn't... Like, it wasn't... It I was mean, an exhibition more final than anything. I mean, if there's any work from home that you can do, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you would think the game That's would it. be right. That's it, yeah. So, I mean, anyway... <sighs> That was my last season as up until now. And, and now? It hasn't been officially announced, but I won't say too much. But, okay. Um, looking pretty good for season four of the E-League. Awesome. Well, they'd be pretty Sorry, mad considering five. second and second and, yeah. you know. Because last year I didn't get selected. Right. By anyone. Why? Don't know. Um, they had the tournament online on COVID. Yeah. And how did Brisbane finish? Last. So well, I think someone's nephew got a gig, right? I like, who knows? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But whoever the selector was, he needs to be fired. <laughs> whoever the new selector is, potentially, if you're coming out there, they can stay. No comment. No comment. I'm, yeah. I know, mate. I'm, I'm just, I'm, and by the way, no. I, Brisbane Roar, if you're listening, I'm just <laughs> illegal. I'm just joking. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. But no, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, looking pretty good for this season. But um, Yeah, good. That's been pretty much my professional career. I have always wanted to make an overseas event. Yep. I've always fallen just short or I haven't been able to compete in the qualifiers. Right. And that was because I was working during uni yep. and or had uni on or yeah. something happened with, you know, something happened in life that just prevented me from trying to compete and qualify for the online tournaments. So, so now you're a professional e-gamer. You've gone professional. How do you make money? And... You don't need to tell us how much. Yep. Uh, though I have got some interesting facts and figures on the gaming industry. And yep. how, I mean, and by the way, I said Powell. It's Power. Mm -hmm. um, Lachlan Power. He is Lachlan. He plays uh, Fortnite and some other things. Matt, you know who he is, right? Um, yeah, he, he lives over in Japan. You know, mm -hmm. how does he sleep at night? And piles of money with beautiful ladies, apparently, because when you're an e-gamer, especially in Asia as well, too, like it's huge, right? I mean, it's huge everywhere now, yes. but I mean, I think that was the sort of the cradle of it. But yep. so don't tell us how much yep. you make, but like maybe sort of say, you know, bracket it maybe, but yep. like 
how do you make money? Yep. Um, and and yeah, I, I mean, are you are you are you living on two minute noodles still? <laughs> no. Right, okay. um, what I will say is, it was initially a risk declining the job that I had offered in Townsville. Yep. And. Can we say how much money that was going to be? That was going to be probably about 70K a year. Which is pretty good. 80K first year a year. Out of, first year out of uni, not bad, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And um, it would have really set me up for where I was trying to go in Canberra. Yeah. Because it was an intelligence position at the jail. Yeah. And basically, that's a very interesting job. It's what I always wanted to do. Intelligence, yeah. information. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you're going through, you know, prisoners, phone calls, emails, you know, trying to... You sound like my wife. They also, <laughs> 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 they also have... Um, she could do that job. <laughs> <laughs> she can also kill. <laughs> <laughs> they also have... Um, a lot of the prisoners will have code words and they'll have their own language. Yep. And they'll try and organise crime from within the jail outside. Wow. So sometimes they'll be still running their businesses. Wow. And the intelligence officer's job is to basically try and find that out. Wow. That's Read cool. their language. That's really cool. I yes. didn't know that. Absolutely. I've never been to prison. And not only that, you're working with the bigger intelligence agencies. So there's information that there's going to be, let's say, a terrorist attack. Yeah. You, you're better off sharing that. You better share that. And, yeah, yeah. you know, if you find something out like that, then you're going to, you know, be sharing that information with your big intelligence agencies. Well, it's not like you were leaving, digging ditches for a living, right? No. I mean, like that was exciting. It's something that you studied for. Absolutely. So it must have been, you Absolutely. know, how long did it take you to make the decision? Oh, to not go for the job? Yeah. Well, it's funny. Uh, and I will shout this, uh, the professor out, basically, uh, Dr. Mark. He was... He's in Townsville Uni? He's in the Townsville Uni. Um, he was a lecturer slash mentor for me. He was there when I was, you know, doing it tough in Townsville. There was a few things that went on. He was always there to support me. Even financially, he always offered if, if I needed to. I wow. never did because I, I, don't, I don't like taking money from people. But he was always there for me. He was a mentor. Um, Hang on, we're sponsoring you. So that's good news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but this guy sounds like a really good guy. Really, very religious guy. Very like, you know. You know, I was going to ask you, I was going to say, there's not too many people that would give you money unless they've got a sort of a faith. Yeah. yeah. You know, sort of Absolutely. something that's bigger than themselves, which yeah. is why they care for humanity. Yeah. And he um, basically knew that's where I wanted to head. Mm. He got in contact with um, one of the intelligence officers who I personally knew because I met him at a, co a criminology conference at the uni one year. I think it was my second year into uni. And Dr. Mark knew where I wanted to go, knew my ambitions in the criminal justice system and basically contacted this guy and said, look, he's interested and that's when I was going to get the job. Wow. We had coffee together. I was very close to taking the job. Yep. I would have stayed in Townsville. That was another part of the decision was the fact that I would have to stay in Townsville. All my family's down here south, down south, right. down in the Brisbane area, yeah. the Toowoomba area. Yeah. So it would have meant, again, you know, establishing a life away from your family, which I could have done, but I think it's important to be near your family. Yeah, I think so. Um, I missed a funeral. You know, there's, there's a few things I missed, so it is... With, you know, co with COVID? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and... I had a week or two to, to you know, think about it. And then I contacted Dr. Mark and said, look, can we go for coffee? And I told him my ambitions the whole time. My ambitions throughout uni were to obviously be an intelligence officer. But I also had in the back of my mind that what if I could make this YouTube thing work? Mm. What if I could, uh, you know, turn this into a career? Mm. And at that stage... YouTube was kicking off. I think I was at 15,000 followers on YouTube. Yeah. It was not the greatest, but it was getting there. It what, was... What, what, when was this? How long ago? Six months. Six months ago. You're at 15. Now you're at 50. 50. Yeah. 51, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I saw, I saw your little plaque that you had there as well too. Yeah. No, yeah. that's for... You get one when you're 100,000, but I edited it. And I know. I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to make it look like you got a plaque. Yeah, yeah. Um, I sat him down. I said, look... I told him my ambitions. He said, look, you should have just told me because, you know, I'm, I'm here to support you if you need. And, you know, you've, I've always uh, been here for you, as you know. And it was at that point where I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm not taking the job. Um, at the time I had left parole, 
there was only a two or three months left in uni and I decided to really grind the YouTube thing start putting out one to two videos a day I yep. knew that the new game was coming out FIFA 22 yeah and I decided you know what I'm gonna give this a crack at the time I was making enough to pay rent and probably live on two minute noodles and is that from money from YouTube from but YouTube from, from ads yep. right? that was my only income, income. at the time yeah after leaving parole was the YouTube thing yeah so I also had good savings as well um, so that I could live off if I needed to. I was willing to sacrifice that though. Um, so basically pursued the YouTube thing in the final two or three months of uni. The new game was coming out and I decided to start really uploading one or two videos a day, mm -hmm. putting a lot of time into the editing. Yeah. like I mean, and, and I appreciate your clips. I love your clips because they're short. Mm -hmm. uh, you get straight to the point. Yep. Um, you know, I, I can. I mean, I watch your stories now too. I mean, yep. obviously, I'm invested yeah, yeah. In, into, into you because, yep. like, I like you and I like I like your style. I like the way that you, you, you and you've got that point of difference as well too. Yep. I mean, I, I, I watch some of the other guys as well too. Yep. Um, do you mind if I mention who they are? No, that's fine. So, because um, I don't want to give them any spotlight, but I like <laughs> I like Crassy and and, and I watch. Um, I watch uh, Mike LaBelle. I mean, these guys are funny. They've got a nice personality, cut a completely different style, right? Yep. But but you get an authentic sort of a feel That's about it. them, right? Uh, and you've got your own style, and I love the short, you know, version of yours. You're straight to the point. You sort of talk about it. You don't overload too much information. Um, so they're really, really great. My yep. son watches them, you know, as well too. So yep. they're, they're relatable to, to even the younger audience. Yep. And that's been adapted over time from feedback, but it's also been adapted, and I've had a sort of a, a strategy with this, the fact that I've realized TikTok has created a culture where people don't want to sit through 15, 20, 30-minute videos. I do not know anything, and it's because of my age, I'm nearly 50, I yep. don't know anything about TikTok other than if you're young and if you want to reach a certain audience, you need to be on there, yep. which we've worked out. But yeah, I only watch YouTube because I'm old. Yep, yep. absolutely. Yep. And what I can say is TikTok is 30-second you know, long videos. At right, max. right. And what it's done is created a culture, in my opinion, yep. that has basically you know, cause people to only value videos that are short and sweet yeah. and get to the point. Yeah. So that's my, been my strategy is right. to keep them three minutes at the mats <laughs> because most tutorials are 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Yeah. I won't go too much into that, but a lot of people do that on purpose because you get more money from Ad AdSense if you have a longer video at 10 minutes. Really? Yes. I know nothing about that. Yeah. But... Mind you, look at Joe Rogan. Yes. I mean, he's the king of podcasts, right? Absolutely. And like his podcasts go for like two hours, three hours. Yeah. You know, the podcasts are different. You can listen to them when you're driving. True. You can absolutely. Know, you can you listen know. to them when you know you're cleaning the house or yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Cooking. Um, and that's yeah, and they're getting quite big now. Podcasts. So, so in terms then of um, revenue, you're making money from from YouTube. Yes. Do do you? What sort of following do you have on TikTok? Do you make money out of TikTok? No. So TikTok and Instagram are not mon uh, don't have the ability to be monetized. Right. It's more of a lead you generation. You get brand deals. Yeah. With them. Right. Right. Yeah. And um, I am wanting to expand after that, and I have started doing that. Yeah. Um, I've got like a thousand on each of the the pl other platforms. So like TikTok are a thousand followers at the moment, um, Instagram, all that. Um, I've had obviously a lot going on that I haven't been able to always upload daily on that, but I always make sure on YouTube, I upload daily. I upload every single day, at least one video, but if not, I try to get two out yep. more because that's monetized and you get mo money for, for doing that. And how, how long does it take you to, cause I appreciate it's two and a half, three and a half, five minute videos. Yep. How long does it take you to film them? Yep edit them and upload them like how how long does that that take each video probably takes two to three hours to edit yeah the filming i'll try and do on a single day yeah but getting the clips to implement into what i'm trying to teach yep. takes yeah, time yeah. as well I, I can imagine yeah. yeah who do you play against to do that oh my gosh there's so many questions yeah, i want to yeah. ask you in the other, yeah, yeah, the other yeah. thing but well, i'll ask you in this one yeah, how, yeah. Do you, how do you actually do that um, do you have a friend that... No. Oh. So I'll play, you know, maybe it'll be on stream. And at the time, I might clip a clip that I'm like, you know what, I'm doing a tutorial on that. Let me just clip that and get that clip. So it's just a friendly? No, no, no. I'll go into like an actual, like, oh. uh, like an actual competitive mode, oh. whereas it's division rivals, foot champions, oh, okay. where I'm playing against good players. You just seem to set it up all the time. I mean, obviously, I appreciate it. It's, it's yep. sounds a lot more difficult than it looks. So. Yeah. Well, I've just got to the point where I'm able to 
implement the things I'm trying to teach mm. against good players. Mm. So um, it number one it shows that it works against good players. Number two, um, you know, it makes it easier for me in the long run because I'm you know I'm looking for clips mm. to put into a tutorial. Then I've got them. So you're making money through YouTube. Yep. And that's uh, paying the rent and yes. a little bit more, and obviously growing now. Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. That's it's, really good. It's, it's growing. Um, I, no, I I do notice that you know it'll go up in spites, then sure. then drop. At least I'm getting bare minimum 100 subscribers a day. Well, what's really interesting, um, and and oh by the way, for people that are listening to this, and I think the next one, I think we really target that towards the yep. the FIFA audience, which will probably maybe move them a little bit more for you. But if they want to follow you, yep. what platform? Do you want them to follow him? Where do they go? Um, you can follow me on, obviously, on YouTube, uh, Aussie FIFA HD, but also on... Aussie FIFA HD. Yes, yep. on Instagram as well. Yeah. Um, and we'll get into this shortly, I'm guessing, but uh, I also show my gym progress. Uh, I and love all it. That sort of stuff on Instagram. Yeah. Um, because it also is linked to a series that I'm doing on YouTube now, which we're going to delve into, is which is the No Money Spent Road to an Event. Which I love too. And again, this is really good for mums listening to this about, oh my gosh, my kid's getting into FIFA. Yes. He's going to be raiding my wallet and buying $120 worth of FIFA points every mm-hmm. week. You yep. know, and you know, maybe you get it for birthdays and, and for Christmases or something like yep. that. But, but um, okay, so so that's YouTube. Yes. And, and you're making money. And you're also now making money yes. through coaching as well too. Absolutely. What do you... Do you mind if I ask, and please don't disclose no. any information, no, no, but no. do you make more money from coaching or more money from YouTube? Coaching. Right, yep. right. And, um, and, and and do you coach a lot of players, and ha- how much time do you spend with them? How does that work? Because we've got the same thing with fitness guys, right? Yep. Um, you know, Jared and all the rest of it, they do online coaching, yep. and then there's in-person coaching as absolutely. well. Absolutely. Obviously, almost all of yours all of yours would be online, right? Yes, yep. absolutely. Yep. Um, I've got clients from all over the world, US, UK, uh, you know, uh, in the Middle East. Um, I see quite a lot of your comments coming from the Middle East, actually, yeah, when I go Yeah, absolutely. And I think it is because... It's re- they're really generous with their comments, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, you, you're so good. You've helped me so much. I, I really have become a better player because of you. Yeah. It's really, it's really nice. It, it is really good to see. And 99% of comments are positive, which yeah. is really cool to see. And I just, you know, it, it doesn't bother me about the negative comments. I was, so was going to ask you about trolls, but we'll get into that maybe yeah, a bit yeah. later. But, yeah, yeah in yeah. terms of... The, so, so you're making more money through your... Coaching. So, so and how, how, many, how many people do you coach? I've got about 35 now. How many people do you reckon you could coach? Probably double, triple. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I would... Currently, I'm working about 12 hours a day. So, it would probably push it up to, you know, 13, 14 hours a day. But yeah. uh, I've looked at capacity of how much I can do. Yeah. Double or triple the amount I'm doing now. And if it gets to the point where there's too many, I'm going to hire another coach. Right. So... I'm going to get to the point where hopefully I need you know another pro player that I can pay a good yep. wage to yep. coach me and yep. do players you know coach players that basically you know I can't get to. Yeah. Um, but I'll always guarantee that they'll at least get half their sessions with me. Yeah. Um, okay. And going back to what you're saying before, I just want to quickly delve into that. Is I think why I have a fair few followers from the Middle East is because I I relate to them at a point where in my outro I always say salam. Yes, I've heard that. So, yeah. what is that? What? What? It's like what? Uh, uh, I think it's like Salam. peace. Salam. Uh, peace is, is that is that Israeli? Is that Jewish? Salam. Uh, it's Arabic. Arabic. Yes. Um, Which is another story, but um, yeah. What do you mean? Because as a, as you know, I was trying to get into intelligence. Um, yeah. And I was actually learning Arabic. Ah, okay, okay. Um, I, I started learning Arabic. Right, uh, right. I'm not fluent. Yeah. I know quite a few sayings and can start a small conversation. So, how do you? What's that word that you said? Salam. Salam is like. Salam. It's like shalom, which is which is that's Israeli for peace be with you. I think mm-hmm. it's funny, isn't it? There's yeah. obviously a, a commonality, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Same as Turkish. It's not the same, but it's it's sort of like you, you, well, some sayings are. You know, what's really funny is that from that part of the world, we've got actually one of our best distributors set up in the UAE. So they're well, just moving into Turkey. Yeah, they've got so actually your audience that's over there can actually be p- purchasing um, wow. ATP science. That's so awesome. that's actually really cool because part of the reason why we want to respond to you, obviously, is because your 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 viewership is, is largely Australian, even though yeah. you are international. Yeah. And we are an international company. Absolutely. We, we've got very strong um, distribution through uh, through the Middle East. Yeah. Very strong. Actually, yep. probably the strongest outside of Australia and New Zealand. Wow. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, with the coaching, uh, you know, I got about 35 clients. I started to pursue that um, – Around three months ago. Yeah. So it's going quite well. I yeah, put a video out that I was coaching. A lot of people jumped on it straight away. Yeah. Um, and that is probably the avenue where I'm earning basically the most money. 
how much time do you spend with them um, in a session and how many times do you see them a week? Is it a sort of a... It depends how many yep. or what coaching package they purchase. Yep. You can you can purchase up to four coaching sessions a month. Yeah. And then there's and there's uh, it goes down to anywhere like twenty dollars a month where you just get access to the coaching Discord and a monthly coaching class that I do every month. Yeah. Um, but you 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 go up into the the one on one coachings with me online from like the silver package, mm -hmm. which goes from like it goes it goes from twenty dollars to two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. As all the packages. Yeah. Um, and then what will happen is they'll basically be invited to the Discord, which is a really cool community. It's quite knit, yep. knit in there. They're yep. all helping each other, which yeah. is great. I don't always have to be there if someone asks a question. A lot of people just are willing to say, you know, this and that. Yeah. But if people tag me independently when I ask me, I'm always there to answer yeah. um, if they have any concerns or, you know, something with the game. They'll book their session. We'll then do a one-on-one -on -one session over Discord. So I'll give them a call. I'll then I get them to share their screen with me. You can mm -hmm. do that on the PlayStation yep. where you share the screen. I can then view their screen. What happens if they're on Xbox? I get them to stream on Twitch on okay. a private account. Right. So then I can look at their screen and also yeah. record it through my desktop. Right, right. Um, and uh, I can, on PS, if they're on PS, they share the screen through the game. Yep. I can look at it, record it through my Elgato game catcher. Yeah, yeah. And yep. then we go back over it. Um, I basically show them what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right, how yeah. to improve, and then um, you know we'll do two or three games a session. So it's an hour or so session. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And um, and, 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 and and you're busy through the middle of the day. That's when you're doing your videoing and all that sort of stuff, right? Because most of these people have got jobs. Yep. I mean, and, and your average client, they're, they're doing this just to improve, to go from like division ten yep. to nine, and yeah, yeah. and then get up into that. Absolutely. Div div and and the best thing about it is everyone's improved in the academy. Yeah, uh, awesome. I, I really love to see that. There's no negative comments. They're all saying how and the thing is with how i teach i make sure they have the basics down pat before getting to fancy anything fancy you see right. a lot of other coaching i've heard a lot of other coaching courses what they'll do is they'll teach also what's broken in that game so a broken mechanic that will be oh. can be abused and shown you know yeah. what's broken but the thing is that's not going to help someone over the long run if they patch it that's it right. if they patch it and also the following year yeah so i'm teaching people how to play from fifa 22 to fifa 50 yeah because the basics of what you need can get down pat mm -hmm. before you can become you know better yeah. at the game yeah and um that's why i think a lot of people like using my coaching um you know academy yep. is because of that I, I i i make sure i'm very strict with it too i say i don't want you to do a skill move yeah I want you to not do a skill move. I want you to focus on dribbling to the space before you do anything else. Sounds like uh, me teaching my uh, son who's under sevens and how to play football. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, forget the flashy stuff, right? Yeah. Look, look, look at Messi. Yeah. I mean, he just he just dribbles, right? That's it. He, That's he, it. He only ever uses a skill move very, very seldomly, right? That's it. So, yeah. And um, I will teach them the, the more complicated things, but I'll make sure they get the basic stuff down pat first. Yeah. And um, yeah, basically everyone's improved on there. It's really good to see. Um, I'll, before we also actually have the one on one session, each coaching session comes with a gameplay analysis. So what they can do is send me a game that they've played through the week. I take a look at it, give them a little bit of feedback on a document, send it through and say, work on this before we work on one on one. Mm -hmm. They'll try and work on that. If they're still having struggles, I'll show them how to remedy some of those issues. Perfect. Um, so it's quite a good um, actual you know setup that I've got in terms of the coaching. And yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much where I'm at with that. And then of course, there's obviously, I'm working with you guys now, which yeah. is really cool. Sponsored athlete. Yep. And, and again, it's, it's a great fit for us because one, I love FIFA. Um, two, uh, you know, actually I've loved gaming always. And, and, and obviously very good. Uh, you're Australian, uh, and again, for us, uh, you know, we, we try and promote local athletes. I mean, yep. we do work with some international ones as well too. Yep. Uh, but also, you're into the gym, and and one of the things when we first started talking that you're really passionate about was that you want to be an advocate, really, to sort of help Absolutely. people become fit, yep. not just esports fit, but also be fit as well too, mm -hmm. and sort of be that yep. example. There's a few things I want to be advocates for. One thing I probably won't delve into yet, um, but the one thing that I am trying to advocate for is the fact that I'm trying to remove the stigma around esports and gaming that if you are to game professionally or even play it in general, you're unhealthy or yep. you're overweight or yep. you're, um, you know, you don't have a life. Yep. You can have a life. You, uh, you know, you can be fit. You yep. can be healthy. Yeah. And I'm trying to show that this actually increases your performance. It actually improves your performance. It's really interesting. Yeah. And, um, 
that's why I started this year the series called The No Money Spent Road to an Event. And The No Money Spent means that you haven't um, purchased um, yep. in, in-game um, yep. points and bought packs, that's it. which is which is how some people do I saw one guy spend $10,000 yes. and bought every... Um, elite card, and again, I'm talking to the the FIFA guys. They know, okay, team of the year cards and all that sort of stuff, right? But like, you know, he, he, they bought every elite card that they possibly could, or icons or what have you, he, that he he possibly could ten thousand dollars, right? Whereas you've spent no money. How Dylan has um, improved his squad and got better players yep. is actually through receiving rewards. Because when you when for you playing do, well, and for, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, winning, you, yeah. yeah, and you get given packs of cards, and from yep. those cards you can sell them yep. and make money, and then go and buy cards, or you can even get good cards if they're untradeable, right? Absolutely. And again, for people who aren't FIFA, they're like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but it just means that um, Dylan's everything that his team, and I've seen your team, it's a very good team, it's a high quality team, yep. right? It has been earned through doing well by playing in yes, FIFA. that's it. So, yeah. Playing the game. Yeah. And I'm trying to show that you don't need to put money into the game yeah. to actually prevail. Yeah. And the other thing I'm trying to show is if you have a good diet, if you go to the gym, if you at least do some form of exercise, if you take a loss, take a break from the game, yep. don't keep playing. Yep. If you, you know, break up how much you're playing through the day, as I said, I only play probably two or three hours a day. Yep. I'm not playing that much. Yep. And um, I'm basically trying to remove that stigma in gaming because I know it's quite strong, especially with parents and their young kids. Yep. I can understand, look, you know, if your kid's playing for hours and hours and hours, I can understand it's not the greatest for them. No. Like, it wouldn't be good for them. Mm. They, you know, it is good to get out and socialise and do things, right? But, um, you know, I'm trying to show that you can play the game, be healthy at the same time. It's about balance, Whilst right? showing, yes, absolutely, whilst showing that fitness and healthy diet can improve your performance. Well, we are going to do a podcast with Steve yes. where we're really going to break down the science. Of it, yep. We're going to break down nutrition Mm -hmm. we're going to break down um you know uh dopamine and serotonin like you know chemical brain chemicals we're going to break down how to increase your reaction time through using supplementation or using um you know focus uh steve is great because i say steve let's research this and he just goes into it and just does a deep dive you know we'll pick up traits from some of the best gamers in the world you know the fastest reaction times we'll break that all down so that people who are playing casually for fun yep like me yep or people who are wanting to become a bit more serious and make money out of it like yourself um we'll give you the full package on how to perform better as an esport athlete Mm -hmm. perfect Um, i think a lot of people would also resonate in that want to know yeah that sort of stuff as well yeah i'm I'm interested yeah because i don't know i mean i'm talking about stuff from henry osiki going back to the 90s where i was listening to this compound that actually increases um hand-eye coordination also increases reaction time Mm. because if you can react that split second faster Mm -hmm. uh clarity of thought get away go away from brain fog all these sorts of things uh, as well as you know whether it be mindfulness techniques now i I know that words overused. Some people say meditation, but you know, and uh, whatever. But like in terms of clearing the mindset, removing emotions, how to deal with defeat yep. and setback. Absolutely. So many things in the real world are the same on the digital world, right? Yeah. So it's about becoming the perfect beast. But Absolutely. as far as obviously, you know, that being a role model, I think that's a really noble thing, and that's what. Um, uh, aspire to noble motives is one of I, I think it's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill said if you aspire to noble motives and you're authentic in other words you believe them then you will be successful because yep. you're going to impact people's lives because Absolutely. you know and that's obviously what you're doing yep and honestly um, it's a really good reason why I went with you guys in terms of partnering with you because yeah. you know natural products things that are going to help with your performance in the game but they're not high in sugars and all that sort of thing they're not bad for you yep I've always been that type of person where I love that natural type of stuff that's, you know, good for your body and yeah. stuff like that can help you perform whatever you're doing, whether it's fitness, whether it's sports, whether it's esports. Yeah. And that's exactly why I love the fact that I'm working with ATP. Oh, uh, thank you. And I, I think the thing for us as well too, like even on our pre-workouts, we use things like safranol. And as I keep saying, it's one of the most expensive compounds we've ever used, yep. but it's actually from... Um, 
uh, saffron rice. It actually comes from that, and it's a compound in there which is a really beautiful nootropic effect in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and again, we always believe that let food be your medicine, medicine be your food. So everything that we look at is based on nature, and mm. you can't hold back nature. Mm. You, you know, you, you can't confine it. You can you can enhance it. You can work with it. There's ebbs and flows and all the rest of it. But um, as we say, putting on chemical straight jackets and doing things, yeah. you have the piper to pay. Yeah. And whether it's now or whether it's down the track, and that's why we. We, this is why I love working with athletes. This yep. is why we like working with people is to enhance and take people forward and give them the things that they need to perform at their absolute best. Right? Absolutely. But um, so outside of that, yep. um, so we've covered off on the fact. How, how many times a week are you training with, at the gym at the moment? Five or six. Five or six. Yeah. And how how long do you sort of train for? Oh well, sometimes I try and keep it to minimum two hours. Yep. Yep. But sometimes up to four hours. Yeah, yeah, it's um, crazy. It's sometimes time. you might meet a mate at the gym and you have to talk for 10 to 15 minutes, so it takes a bit of your time away. Oh, look, and there's a social aspect to it as well, too. Absolutely. I mean, I love the Dorian Yates's, and, and like we're actually putting together a program at the moment based on. Uh, scientific research that Steve, Elisma, uh, Jared and the team are doing on the perfect nutrition exercise plan for the people who want to maximize their results for the shortest amount of time possible. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not going to suit your professional you know, trainers, but this is for the average person. I'd love to involve you and your community yep. in it because there's a lot of people where the barrier to entry for actually starting training is one, not knowing what to do. The second thing is um, being limited in time. Yep. Um, so if we can overcome come those two hurdles then we can create a program Absolutely. which we're going to be launching in September yep. which is going to be able to help people to to give them all the information education and support that they need to be able to make a change if they want it yep. so and I think you could be a really great ambassador to help obviously reach into that community yep. that may be looking at you and going I, I want to be you know I want to play like Dylan as far as my sports is concerned well, yeah. but I'll, you've inspired me to get off my ass and get to yeah. the gym a lot of I people have messaged me saying that right like, you know that and they, it's a good thing right absolutely yeah, yeah. And, and again not just for their for their gaming but mm. for their health yep. for their for their you know physical well-being yep. um, you know I understand COVID's been hard on a lot of people including myself as well too stress and not training and you know all the rest of it and it's like okay guys here's something that's simple that we can all do so that'll that'll be fun That'll be really, really fun. Yep. Well, look, really interesting dive, Dylan, into what it's like to be an eSport gamer. Um, you know, obviously, really interesting history, really interesting story. I know a lot of people play video games. Um, I know a lot of people are worried about their children or their husbands or their wives playing too much video games. So that's the end of this podcast. But what we're going to do, yep. and again, you might have come there from, we're going to do a 15, 20-minute Jeff Ask Dylan FIFA questions. So if you're interested... Uh, we'll call that um, uh, FIFA Q&A with yep. Dylan. Yep. So have a look for that. Um, if you're not interested in FIFA, then uh, I'll let you take us out with your signature sign-off um, today, Dylan. Well, thank you for having me, Jeff. And uh, it's great to be on the podcast. Great to be working with ATP. Um, it's been a work in progress. Finally got there. And I'm um, really, really looking forward to, to working with the team. Um, if you yeah, if you're looking to, to learn the game, uh, I, I do a lot of tutorials on on YouTube uh, on the Aussie FIFA HD. Um, it's now actually rebranded. I've I've changed it to my name um, slash Aussie FIFA HD. So Dylan Banks is the name on Instagram. You can also find me on Dylan Banks. So Dylan underscore Banks underscore A F H D. And uh, yeah, if you're looking to get better at FIFA, I can always help you. You can join the academy if you like. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, if not, you'll be seeing me on. If you're in Australia at least, or even in international, no, it gets quite a few international views. You'll be seeing them on the on the big screen um, for the C League coming up this season. Awesome, excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. And Dylan, give us your signature sign off because I love it. Sign our au revoir, adios, salam, ciao, goodbye. Perfect. Excellent.